Hey and welcome to the Dazlite video tutorials. I'm Simon Bennett and today I'm going to be talking to you about fixture profiles and how to add lighting fixtures to your Dazlite show. Now if you've not seen the introduction tutorial yet, I'd really recommend watching that first as it goes through all the basics of Dazlite. What I'm going to do here is dive a little bit further into fixture profiles, what they are and what we can do with them. So here I am in Dazlite, I'm on the patch tab here. This is where we actually add the lighting fixtures to the software. We have a menu here of all the lighting brands, manufacturers and all the profiles. Here I've got the generic moving head selected. We can just search for a lighting fixture here. We can import a lighting fixture from the computer here. Or we can actually import from our online library here. So what this will do is actually look for the latest library on our servers and it'll allow us to take a lighting fixture from there. So what I'm going to do now is just show you what these actually are. So this is actually a file called an SSL2 file. And a fixture profile is a little file that contains information about that lighting fixture and what it can do. And fixture profiles are actually created with the scan library editor. Now to open the scan library editor, we can just go up here and we can go tools and scan library. So I already have it open over here. And this is what the library editor looks like. Now normally you won't need to go into the library editor as we've got such an extensive library now of over 15,000 profiles and we've got a free service where we can make them for you ourselves. Um, but, you know, from time to time you might need to dive in here to modify a few little bits and pieces. So, basically, the way the editor works is we've got a list of channels here, and then we've got a list of presets here. So, for example, this is an empty moving head, and I could add a dimmer channel. So I click this dimmer button, and now channel 1 is the dimmer channel. Now, at the moment, we've got a little red triangle here because we've got nothing inside our channel we actually have to add a preset inside this channel so I'm going to add a dimmer preset and what this is going to do is it's going to adjust the dimmer from 0 to 255 then we can go and add a color channel so this is a fixed color wheel we've got here and we can add some color presets so normally the first color is white so I just need to add the white preset here then maybe blue, pink, or magenta, however you want to look at it, green, cyan, red, orange. So now we've got a color wheel channel with various color presets. We've got gobos as well. We've got a ton of different gobos here we can add. Shutter, this will... Um, open and close a shutter if your light has one or it will make a light strobe so we've got loads and loads of different channel types and presets and settings now when you're done here you go up to the top and you can save this so I can save this as my fixture and this is in a directory called scan library And now if I go back over to Dazlite, I can import this profile. So now I have my fixture here, I can drag it and I can drop it onto the patch and here it appears. On the left I've got my channels, so we've got the dimmer, we've got the colour, we have the gobo and then we have the strobe and when we go onto the palette view we also see the palettes for these various channels as well so that's basically where the fixture profile comes from and how to add the fixture profile to the patch now there are several other patching options so um, in the introduction tutorial we had a look down here where we could specify the DMX universe number, the first DMX channel, the number of fixtures we want to add. So for example if I select 7 and click patch it will patch an additional 7 fixtures 
And the fixture index, this is the number we want to start counting the fixtures from. So you see here we've got index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, etc. Um, if we right click a fixture here, we can change the colour. This is just the colour it appears over here. We can also rename a fixture, that's kind of useful because we can see the names in various places throughout the software. So for example this could be um, left. Now this button over here allows us to go into list mode, so if I click this, this will actually show all my lighting fixtures in a list. And I can expand each fixture and see which channels it contains and which DMX address each channel is on. And over here we've got the profile. So this is the actual file path of the fixture profile. Now when you save a Daslight show and open it on another computer, you don't actually need to move the fixture profile because it's all embedded within the show file. So there's no need to zip up and transfer your SSL profiles as well. However, if you then wanted to go in and edit that profile, it wouldn't be possible because once it's been imported into the show, you can't extract that profile and edit it. So if you think there's a chance that maybe one day in the future you want to edit the profile or include it in a different show, it's always best to keep a copy. So we have several checkboxes over here on the right. If I just start with this one. So this is fade. Now this is going to enable and disable any fading on the channel. So for example here we've got a gobo wheel. Now if you want to fade from one gobo to another it's not going to look very pretty because the gobo wheel is going to be moving and you're going to see all the gobos in between the two gobos you're fading between. And this is the same with a fixed colour wheel. Imagine if you want to go from blue to red but there's a green in between that blue and the red. If you want to fade from one step which is blue to another step which is red, it's going to pass through the green and it's not going to look very pretty. So I'll give you a little example of this. If we just go over to the editor, I'm going to highlight my first fixture. I'll just show you with this one for now. I'm going to switch my beam on and I'm going to select blue for the colour. Then I'm going to create another step over here and I'm going to select green and I'm going to set another dimmer value of 50%. Then I'm going to add a fade time to this. So to do that I go up here, just double click, I'll add a fade time of 5 seconds to both steps. Okay, I'm also going to remove the hold time. And I'm going to switch looping off. So if I press play now, Notice that the colour jumps to green straight away, but then it just slowly fades that dimmer down. Now, if we go back to patch, and if I enable fading on that colour wheel, and then play the scene again, This time it's going to scroll past pink before it gets to green because pink is in between green and blue on the colour wheel and that doesn't look very pretty. And in a nutshell that's why fading can be enabled and disabled on certain channel types. It's so you can just disable fading on like your colour wheels, your gobo wheels, any kind of channels that you don't want to fade. So here we have the dimmer checkbox. And basically the dimmer checkbox determines whether the master dimmer of the software will control this channel or not. So for example, at the moment it's enabled, if I go over to the live screen here, I'm going to play my scene and then I'm going to move my master dimmer which is over here. So if I take this and then move the master dimmer, notice the master dimmer is controlling the light. Now if I switch the dimmer off, so if I go back to patch, switch that dimmer off here, then go back to the live screen and play the scene again, this time the dimmer's not controlling anything. 
So that's the dimmer checkbox. After that we've got a few other options. So we've got invert pan, invert tilt, and swap pan and tilt. And I don't actually have a moving fixture patched here, so let's get one of these in. So I'll patch a moving head, I'll get rid of these. I'll go generic and moving head. So I'll just patch one and then I'll open the 3D visualizer so we can see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to switch my light beam on and I'll just make sure this is always on top and I'm going to put my lights in the center. Now if we get the list view up again here, if I just do the tilt, so if I move the tilt up, it moves against the back wall. And then if I move the tilt down, it moves towards me. Now imagine this is inverted, so it's the wrong way round. So imagine the moving head's pointing the other way. We can basically click this little checkbox and it's going to invert the tilt. So now when I move the tilt upwards, it moves towards me. And when I move the tilt downwards, it moves the light away from me. And this is the same from pan. So when I move the cursor left, the moving head moves left. When I move the cursor right, the light moves right. And then when I click this checkbox, it's the other way around. So as I move the cursor left, it moves right. As I move the cursor right, it moves the light left. So it's really useful because, you know, sometimes your lights will be on the truss. You'll realize this is the wrong way around. And all you have to do is just click this little checkbox and it's resolved. So this one inverts the pan and tilt channels in case you've got them the wrong way around. So now the pan will control the tilt and the tilt will actually control the pan instead. I know it seems pointless, but imagine you've got a scanner that's mounted sideways. You might want to control the pan with the tilt and the tilt with the pan. So that's the advanced patching. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to go and start looking at arranging lighting fixtures and things we can do with the actual control of the lighting fixtures.